You're watching Silver News Daily. Subscribe for more. Peter Schiff has issued a bold and urgent warning that every investor needs to hear. Sell all your crypto and buy silver before it skyrockets to $2,000 very soon. Yes, you heard that right. In today's video, we're diving into why Peter Schiff believes silver is poised for an explosive rise and why you should consider making this dramatic shift in your investment strategy immediately. Stick around to find out how this precious metal could change your financial future and why now is the critical moment to act. I think that these stocks are still incredibly cheap. You know, gold stocks have been the ironic victim of inflation. You would normally think, oh, high inflation, that's good for gold miners. The problem is the investors haven't really recognized how bad the inflation threat is, and they haven't bid up gold prices enough, but the cost of mining has gone up dramatically. Most gold companies are making less money today mining gold at you know 2400 than they were mining it at 500 um because of the increase in energy costs and labor costs but what nobody seems to notice is that recently now gold prices are outstripping the gains in a lot of other commodities and the dollar has stayed firm meaning the gold price in terms of other currencies has actually risen faster than it has in dollars. And most mining companies, their wages are in those other currencies. So the margins, I think, over the last few months have really improved rather remarkably in these gold stocks. And so I would be looking for that to be reflected in their earnings that come out. And maybe that'll be a catalyst or a wake up call to Wall Street to buy these stocks. But before they get that wake up call, while they're still sleeping, I would advise your listeners to be moving heavily into this segment, recognizing it is a risky segment. So, you know, don't put money in there that you absolutely can't afford to lose. But if you do have risk capital, this is what risk capital is for, because the upside potential, I think, dwarfs the downside risk. I think it's a unique opportunity to make, you know, stellar returns. Uh, and, you know, you can do it yourself or you can hire me. In fact, I didn't even do it myself. I hired Adrian Day. You've had him on your program. Adrian manages the Europe Pacific Gold Fund. You can buy that no load uh, uh, at any discount brokerage firm. EPGIX, I believe, is the no load symbol. It's the institutional class of the uh, Europe Pacific Gold Fund. I think Adrian has built an incredible portfolio. We've got some really good juniors in there that I think are going to be, you know, the, the 50, 100 baggers of this bull market. But I think the seniors are still going to go up 10x, uh, in, you know, by the before this thing is over. Uh, but you can get a lot of exposure. If you have a larger portfolio, we have separately managed accounts at Europe Pacific Asset Management. Uh, you can visit me at europacfunds.com or europac.com, uh, even shorter, uh, and talk to our representatives there about us uh, managing a portfolio for you in the mining space. Uh, you know, we we do separately managed accounts. And of course, you know, don't overlook owning the physical metal. I mean, I think there's more upside potential in the miners right now, but of course there's more risk there as well. But everybody should own some physical gold and silver, silver in particular right now. Uh, and you could get that from shiftgold.com. You know, that's my gold company. And I think we've got the best prices and the best service. You know, we've got personal service uh, at discount prices and we don't push people into uh, numismatics or anything like that. We recognize that you're not buying gold to become a coin collector. I mean, if you're a coin collector, OK, that's totally different. I'm not knocking collecting coins or collecting art or anything else. Uh, but if you just want an inflation hedge, if you want to get out of fiat currency and have savings in metal, you don't need to become a coin collector. You just need to buy the most gold and silver you can for your money. Peter Schiff's bold prediction about silver skyrocketing to $2,000 is not just a wild guess. It's rooted in the current market dynamics and economic policies that are reshaping the investment landscape. Let's start by examining the recent performance of silver. In the past few months, we've seen silver prices fluctuate hitting significant highs and consolidating around key support levels. Currently, silver is trading near $32.50, a price that reflects both its intrinsic value and external economic pressures. The white metal experienced a sharp decline to $31.50,
amid a cautious market awaiting the Federal Open Market Committee, FONC, minutes. Despite this dip, silver remains in a strong position, underpinned by technical indicators and broader market trends. The silver market has shown resilience, maintaining an upward trajectory thanks to the bullish momentum from investors and central banks. The Relative Strength Index, RSI, for silver has comfortably shifted into the bullish range, indicating sustained upward momentum. Moreover, the 20-period exponential moving average, EMA, suggests that the upward trend is still intact, providing further confidence to investors. These movements are not just short-term fluctuations, but part of a larger pattern influenced by global economic factors, including inflation fears and central bank policies. Silver's recent breakout above the $1.30 mark has been a significant bullish signal, drawing in both retail and institutional investors. This trend is supported by a combination of fundamental factors, such as increased industrial demand and central bank purchases, which we will explore in the subsequent sections. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into why silver is set to soar and why Peter Schiff is adamant about this precious metal's potential to reach unprecedented heights. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so now to stay updated with the latest investment insights and strategies. And what are your thoughts on silver's potential? Do you believe it could hit dollar two thousand? Let us know in the comments below. On hamburger, what you used to spend on steak, well, by that logic, if Americans have to eat dog food, they can say, well, that's fine because the dog food just costs what steak used to, and they're still eating, right? They, they you know, so it's like it, it it misses the degradation in in the standard of living and your quality of life. And people, you know, people just skip breakfast maybe, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, I, you know, you could, you know, you don't need it. I do intermittent fasting myself, but I'm not doing it out of necessity. I'm doing it for health reasons. It's not that I can't afford to eat, but, you know, I remember there was this one executive I saw interviewed on television and he was really excited uh, because I think it was Kellogg's, their earnings were going up because he said, yeah, people are eating cereal for dinner now. Right. Because that's all they can afford. So they could skip breakfast and then have their cereal at night instead of in the morning. It was like, you know, in the 1970s, when the heating costs were going up, Jimmy Carter said, well, just wear sweaters. Right. That's just going to be America. Right. We we can't afford heat. So we wear sweaters. Right. We can't afford air conditioning. So well, I don't know. We just walk around in our bathing suits. Uh, but it's just, you know, our, our our standard of living as a nation is going down because the things we used to take for granted uh, become too expensive to afford. And, you know, you could thank government. This is this is the government uh, imposing this burden on the population in order to continue. It to understand why silver might be on the verge of skyrocketing to dollar two thousand. We need to look closely at the Federal Reserve's policies and their broader impact on the market. The Federal Reserve, as part of its ongoing efforts to control inflation, has been maintaining higher interest rates for an extended period. This strategy, while aimed at curbing inflation, has significant implications for non-yielding assets like silver. High interest rates increase the opportunity cost of holding silver, as investors seek higher returns from interest-bearing assets. However, the Federal Reserve's stance on interest rates can also create an environment of uncertainty and volatility, which historically drives investors toward safe haven assets, such as precious metals. Currently, the Fed has indicated that while rate cuts might be on the horizon, they are not imminent, leading to a cautious yet optimistic outlook for silver. Furthermore, the Fed's decisions impact the strength of the U.S. dollar. As the dollar strengthens, non-yielding assets like silver may experience downward pressure. However, any signs of weakening in the dollar or hints of rate cuts can provide a significant boost to silver prices. Recently, the U.S. dollar index, DXY, rose to 104.90, while 10-year U.S. Treasury yields increased to 4.46%. These movements reflect the market's reaction to the Fed's hawkish guidance, but also set the stage for potential gains in silver if economic conditions shift. The silver market's recent performance around the $32.50 mark, despite fluctuations, indicates a consolidating phase that could precede a major breakout. Technical analysis supports this view, with silver maintaining strong bullish indicators. The market is also watching closely for any signals from the Federal Reserve that could trigger a significant upward move. Investors must stay informed and be ready to act. The interplay between Fed policies, interest rates, and silver prices creates a dynamic market environment ripe with opportunities. Keep watching as we uncover more about why silver is poised for a dramatic rise and how you can position yourself to benefit from this potential surge.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest insights and let us know in the comments. How do you think the Fed's policies will impact silver prices in the coming months? On the supermarkets that are trying to shut down because they're not profitable with all the theft. And so they're trying to force them to, to stay in business. Uh, but this, the cost of living has moved up dramatically over the past few years, probably 30 or 40 percent. Uh, and Americans, you know, were living plate paycheck to paycheck before that happened. And that's why you're seeing this surge in jobs, because so many people now have been forced to take second and third jobs. Moonlighting is at an all time record high. That's also why you've seen credit card debt hitting record highs, even as credit card interest rates are at record highs because Americans are borrowing and taking second and third jobs to pay their rent or to pay the utility bills or to put food on the table or pay for their insurance. The, the necessities of life have increased in price substantially and it's going to continue. It's not going to stop. It's going to be relentless. Uh, and the reason that everything costs so much more is because the government is so much larger than it used to be. And there it's for it's so much more expensive because the public has to support the government. And if the government isn't going to raise taxes, then it simply prints money and raises prices. Inflation is a tax. It's the way the government takes your purchasing power and transfers it to itself so we can give it to whoever is benefiting from the spending. Uh, and so it's really the tax burden that is skyrocketing, uh, and especially since COVID, but even before COVID, uh, the burden was going up, and now it's just really skyrocketed. And you know, as more and more people in my generation leave the workforce and start collecting Social Security and Medicare, uh, the, the, the burden is just gonna be greater and greater on everybody else. And yeah, civil unrest is is coming. And, you know, it could get even worse because what I think is ultimately where we're headed is price controls. I think the government, they've already started blaming companies for the inflation. Companies are too greedy. They're jacking up their prices. You know, it's not fair. They're taking advantage of people. This is all a bunch of BS. Uh, the companies have no choice. Inflation is forcing prices higher. They, they would rather not raise their prices. In fact, they've dragged their feet. They've absorbed a lot of the increased costs, hoping that it was transitory. Uh, but, you know, they've... As we continue exploring why Peter Schiff believes silver is set to hit $2,000, it's crucial to consider the broader global economic outlook. The current economic landscape is characterized by high inflation, geopolitical tensions, and uncertain financial markets all of which contribute to the rising appeal of silver as a safe haven asset. Inflation remains a significant concern globally. According to recent reports, inflation is not only persistent, but is also expected to stay above central banks' target levels for the foreseeable future. The Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England have all indicated that inflation rates are likely to remain elevated, prompting continued cautiousness in monetary policies. Despite efforts to curb inflation through interest rate hikes, these measures have not yet fully achieved their intended effects. The Global Risks Report highlights that geopolitical tensions, such as the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war and conflicts in the Middle East, further exacerbate economic uncertainties. These tensions lead to disruptions in global supply chains, contributing to higher costs of goods and services. Additionally, the risk of new conflicts and escalating existing ones adds to the overall market instability. In this environment, silver's dual role as both an industrial metal and a store of value becomes increasingly important. The metal is in high demand for various industrial applications, including electronics, solar panels, and medical devices, which provides a solid foundation for its value. At the same time, its historical role as a hedge against inflation and economic turmoil makes it an attractive investment. Investors are also looking at central banks buying activities, while central banks have traditionally focused on gold, there is a growing interest in silver, especially among emerging market economies. This shift is driven by the need to diversify reserves and protect against currency fluctuations and economic instability. As inflation continues to rise and geopolitical tensions persist, silver stands out as a reliable asset. The combination of industrial demand and its safe haven appeal positions silver for significant gains.
Peter Schitt's prediction of silver reaching $2,000 is not just speculative. It is grounded in these fundamental economic and geopolitical realities. Keep following our series as we delve deeper into the factors driving silver's potential surge and how you can strategically invest in this precious metal. Remember to subscribe for the latest updates and insights and share your thoughts in the comments how you see the global economic situation influencing the silver market in the near future. Silver was really bound to uh, take off. It was near, what, 90 to 1 with gold, you know, record lows. Uh, gold was marching higher uh, really from 2000 to 2200, 2300-ish. And silver hadn't even moved. Silver was still below 25. And then all of a sudden it spiked up to 30. Uh, pull back a bit. Uh, but I think now silver has broken out and it's joined gold and will ultimately eclipse gold as far as the percentage gains, not not the price. But I think, you know, percentage wise, uh, I think that silver could hit $50 an ounce before gold hits 3000 And so uh, that's a much bigger uh, gain for the price of silver than the price of gold. Uh, but again, I think the reason was the central banks. They weren't buying silver. They were just buying gold. They don't, they don't have room to store silver. And also the central banks aren't investing in the mining stocks. So, you know, it's the retail public and institutions that might have been investing and they were not. Again, they don't understand it. They think that gold or silver should be going down because it's a soft landing. Everything is great. Buy the Magnificent Seven. And those who are worried, well, they were buying Bitcoin. I think that the, the launch of these Bitcoin ETFs really, you know, provided that smokescreen because when everybody should have been talking about gold's rally, they were talking about these Bitcoin ETFs, which were the most successful ETFs as far as how much money went into them. They're not going to be successful from the point of view of the people who were dumb enough to buy them. It's going to be a complete failure. But Wall Street did, you know, sucker in a lot of uh, speculators. So they're they're making money. Uh, for now in these ETFs. But I was actually watching during that first month or so of trading, like there was one week where gold went sideways and gold stocks were down like 15%. And, and, they, and it was like, well, what's going on? And I thought, well, maybe people are selling off their gold stocks to buy the Bitcoin ETFs because the money had to come from somewhere. And in fact, all year, we've had record outflows out of GLD, which is the biggest gold ETF. At the same time, where gold prices are running up to record highs. And normally, it's the opposite. Normally, the retailers are chasing a rally. They're not selling into the rally. And so what that tells me is that they've got it wrong. This rally has legs. It has a long way to go. It's not going to be until we have huge inflows from the retail public that we're probably going to get a significant correction. Probably not even a bear market at this stage. But we could have a five or ten percent correction if the public jumps in. Uh, but so far, they're still. Let's delve deeper into why Peter Schiff advocates for shifting investments from cryptocurrencies to silver. Comparing these two asset classes provides a clear perspective on the potential advantages of silver in the current economic environment. Cryptocurrencies have gained massive popularity over the past decade, with Bitcoin leading the charge. However, the volatility and speculative nature of cryptocurrencies make them risky investments. The crypto market has seen wild price swings, driven by market sentiment, regulatory news, and technological developments. While some investors have made substantial profits, many others have experienced significant losses. Peter Schiff's skepticism towards cryptocurrency stems from their lack of intrinsic value. Unlike silver, which has tangible uses in various industries and has been a recognized store of value for centuries, Cryptocurrencies are purely digital assets. Schiff argues that the speculative bubble in the crypto market is unsustainable and that these assets lack the fundamental backing that precious metals possess. Silver, on the other hand, offers stability and a hedge against inflation. Its value is derived from both its industrial applications and its historical role as money. Industrial demand for silver is robust, driven by its use in electronics, solar panels, and medical equipment. This demand provides a solid floor for silver prices, making it less susceptible to the speculative volatility seen in cryptocurrencies. Furthermore, silver's performance as a hedge against economic uncertainty and inflation is well documented. In times of economic instability, 
investors flock to precious metals to preserve their wealth. With inflation rates soaring and central banks struggling to manage economic policies, silver's appeal as a safe haven asset is stronger than ever. In contrast, the regulatory environment for cryptocurrencies remains uncertain. Governments worldwide are grappling with how to regulate these digital assets, leading to potential risks for investors. Regulatory crackdowns can lead to sudden and severe price drops, adding to the overall volatility and risk. Peter Schiff's call to sell crypto and buy silver is based on these fundamental differences. He views silver as a more reliable and less volatile investment, especially in the face of looming economic challenges. As we move forward, it's essential to consider these aspects when making investment decisions. Stay tuned as we continue to explore the factors driving the silver market and why it could be the right time to follow Peter Schiff's advice. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and updates, and let us know in the comments. Are you considering shifting your investments from cryptocurrencies to silver? Why or why not? Of goods. Uh, copper is also a, an important uh, commodity to watch. It's, it's, it's used in a lot of uh, key things that we need. And you know, too, you've got the, uh, the big move towards electric everything. And that takes a lot of copper, you know, people, you, people forget, okay, we're not going to use oil. All right. But we got, where's it going to get the copper where well, you're going to get the, the nickel or some of these other uh, minerals that need to be mined. But, you know, I'm looking at the agriculture complex. I mean, you've got certain key cocoa, coffee, I mean, things that have really exploded. Um, but I'm looking for, you know, bigger moves in the grains when you start to see the wheat and the corn and the soybeans, because these are the ingredients that are really going to put a lot of pressure on grocery prices, uh, even more so than we have. And then you look at, you know, other hogs and cattle and, you know, the meat, you know, because um, that's really going to bite, you know, uh, when it's the food that ends up costing. Americans take food for granted, right? Because it's it's been so cheap for us on a relative basis. But when it starts eating into a, a bigger percentage of your paycheck, uh, it becomes a big problem. And, you know, people initially uh, respond by, you know, reducing. Now let's examine the role of central banks and their influence on the precious metals market, particularly silver. Central banks around the world have been pivotal in shaping the demand for precious metals through their monetary policies and reserve management strategies. Historically, central banks have been major buyers of gold, using it to diversify their reserves and hedge against economic instability. Recently, there has been a noticeable shift with some central banks showing increased interest in silver. This trend is particularly evident in emerging markets where economic volatility and currency fluctuations are more pronounced. Central banks in countries like India and China have been leading the charge in accumulating precious metals. Their strategic purchases are driven by the need to safeguard their economies against external shocks and to reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar. By holding significant amounts of precious metals, these countries aim to strengthen their economic resilience and enhance financial stability. The ongoing geopolitical tensions and economic uncertainties have only accelerated this trend. With the risk of sanctions, trade wars, and other economic disruptions, central banks are diversifying their reserves more aggressively. Silver, with its industrial demand and monetary history, is becoming an attractive option alongside gold. Moreover, the green energy revolution is further boosting silver's appeal. Silver is a critical component in the production of solar panels and other renewable energy technologies. As countries worldwide push for greener energy solutions, the demand for silver is expected to surge, providing a strong fundamental support for its price. In the context of monetary policy, central banks' actions significantly impact silver prices. When central banks engage in quantitative easing or maintain low interest rates, it often leads to currency devaluation and inflation. In such scenarios, investors turn to precious metals as a hedge. Conversely, when central banks tighten monetary policies, it can increase the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding assets like silver. However, the current economic environment suggests that central banks will continue to face challenges in balancing inflation and growth, likely maintaining a supportive backdrop for silver prices. Peter Schiff's recommendation to invest in silver is strongly influenced by these macroeconomic trends. As central banks continue to play a crucial role in the precious metals market, the strategic importance of silver is likely to grow. Skiff believes that the actions of these financial institutions, combined with increasing industrial demand, set the stage for silver's substantial price appreciation. Stay tuned as we delve further into the industrial demand for silver and how it is poised to drive prices even higher.
Make sure to subscribe for the latest updates and insights. What are your thoughts on central banks' influence on silver prices? Do you think their increasing interest in silver will significantly impact its market value? Share your views in the comments below. Over uh, mining equities, uh, traders uh, are you know uh, very skeptical of this rally. They didn't expect it. In fact, uh, just a couple of months ago, uh, Newmont Mining and Barrick Gold were basically downgraded to cells, the equivalent, you know, holes uh, by Wall Street because they saw no upside in the price of gold. And that's when gold was around 2000. We're now around 2400, 20% 20 increase. Uh, that's pretty good upside. And, you know, it's still early in the year. And, you know, it's just that the, the traders still don't understand it. They think, well, the Fed is going to cut rates fewer times than we thought, or is going to delay the rate cuts. And they think that's bearish for gold. But it's really not bearish because it doesn't even matter if the Fed cuts rates at all. Uh, the Fed should be hiking rates, and they're not. And that's what's bullish for gold, because inflation uh, is already headed back up. It never got down to 2%. Now it's headed back higher. I think we're going to take out the 9.1% peak from uh, mid-2022, I mean, all the forward-looking indicators, commodity prices, not just gold and silver, but all commodities are showing incredible strength, uh, much more so than we saw in the previous year. Uh, and credit growth has continued unabated despite the Fed's rate hikes. Government is borrowing more. Private sector is borrowing more. Everybody is spending. Uh, deficits are out of control. There's no sign of any fiscal restraint. It's the, it's the deficit spending that is the driving force behind the inflation. And the, the Fed monetization and the artificially low interest rates, and even though the Fed has hiked rates many times and we're back above 5%, that's still a low rate. Uh, the, it's still a stimulative rate. It's not a restrictive weight the way a Powell and his cronies at the Fed claim. The Fed is still providing uh, easy money to the economy. And of course, we have highly stimulative fiscal policy. So it's an inflationary cocktail and gold uh, understands this or gold investors. And the big investors are the central banks. Uh, foreign central banks, particularly emerging market central banks, are major buyers of gold. That's going to continue. Uh, investors haven't even really participated yet, but they will probably at much higher prices. You mentioned on your show recently as well that the mainstream... Let's explore the industrial demand for silver and how it plays a critical role in its market dynamics. Unlike other precious metals, silver has a unique position due to its extensive industrial applications, which significantly influence its demand and price. Silver is a vital component in numerous high-tech and industrial applications. One of the most prominent uses of silver is in the production of solar panels. With the global push towards renewable energy and sustainable practices, the demand for solar panels has skyrocketed. Silver's excellent electrical conductivity and reflective properties make it indispensable in photovoltaic cells, which convert sunlight into electricity. As countries aim to meet their renewable energy targets, the demand for silver in this sector is expected to continue rising. In addition to solar panels, silver is extensively used in electronics. Its superior conductivity and durability make it ideal for use in a wide range of electronic devices, from smartphones and tablets to computers and televisions. The growing adoption of new technologies and the proliferation of electronic devices globally ensure a steady demand for silver in this industry. Another critical industrial application of silver is in the medical field. Silver's antibacterial properties make it valuable in medical devices, wound dressings, and other healthcare applications. The ongoing advancements in medical technology and the increasing focus on healthcare infrastructure especially post-pandemic, are likely to drive further demand for silver. Furthermore, silver is used in various other industries, including automotive, water purification, and chemical production. Its versatility and unique properties ensure that it remains an essential material across multiple sectors. The industrial demand for silver not only provides a solid foundation for its price, but also differentiates it from other precious metals like gold, which primarily rely on investment demand. This dual demand, both industrial and investment, creates a robust market for silver, offering a buffer against market volatility. Peter Schiff's prediction of silver reaching $2,000 is supported by these fundamental factors. The increasing industrial demand, combined with its role as a safe haven asset, positions silver for significant price appreciation. As industries continue to grow and innovate, 
the reliance on silver will only intensify, providing a strong upward momentum for its price. As we move forward, it's essential to recognize the strategic importance of silver in both industrial applications and as an investment. The convergence of these factors makes silver a compelling asset in today's economic environment. Keep following our series as we uncover more reasons why silver is set to soar and how you can capitalize on this opportunity. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and updates, and let us know in the comments. How do you see the industrial demand for silver evolving in the next few years? Will it significantly impact silver's market value? Share your thoughts below. I had to, um, uh, you know, uh, raise their prices to, to maintain their margins, to stay in business, because if they go out of business, then, you know, there's nothing to buy because they're no longer selling. But I think the government is going to impose price controls uh, as things really start to spiral. And then that takes a bad situation and makes it worse. So now it's not just that prices are higher. It's just you can't even buy the stuff because the goods are no longer available for sale uh, because, uh, you know, the, the price controls or you can buy the stuff, but it's even more expensive because you got to buy it on the black market. The only place you can get it is from a criminal who's willing to break the law. And then the price is even higher because the premium is greater because he's risking going to jail selling you this stuff. Now, there will be some stuff available if you want to wait on a long line. If you don't want to wait on a long line, you could pay somebody to wait on it for you. But then it really makes the cost of goods go up. So, that you know, there's no way that the government can stop it with these gimmicks. But they, they're under a lot of political pressure to do something. And they never want to accept responsibility for creating the inflation. They just want to look for scapegoats to blame it on. But, you know, that's going to create even more civil unrest. And, you know, in the, the, the culture that we have now, where everybody feels entitled to something, where people feel that they don't have to work that they can sit home and get a welfare check or get, you know, food stamps, you know, through SNAP or housing vouchers or health care or free education. Once Americans uh, accept that, right? And, and, you know, we used to be a nation of rugged individuals. You know, when welfare was first introduced during the Depression, a lot of people were too embarrassed to take it and too, they had too much pride to take it. And there were actually people who paid the money back like when they got jobs, they felt like they needed to pay it back. Like, you know, how I can't take something that I didn't earn. Right. So Americans had, had a different a culture and a different sense of responsibility and, 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 and personal dignity. But now when people just expect that they're owed something simply because they're there and you believe in that, well, theft is simply a way of cutting out the middleman. Right. If I think that I'm entitled to free stuff, and the government can take it from other people and give it to me. Well, if I'm not getting what I what I believe I'm entitled to, why wait for the government to steal it for me? I'll just do it myself. I'll just go help myself. To fully do appreciate why silver there. might reach two thousand I mean, dollars, people it's will think that way. I mean, a lot of people will think, "Well, it's reparations." You know, understanding I'm just, the past uh, why can wait provide for the insights I'm just take into the potential mine. trajectory of silver and, prices and, so all and validate this is, Peter Schiff's bull is prediction. And, uh, Historically, so it, it, silver has it, experienced not, several uh, significant price movements driven by various economic and geopolitical factors. One of the most notable periods was during the late 1970s and early 1980s when silver prices surged due to high inflation and geopolitical tensions. Another spike occurred in 2011, when silver prices reached nearly $50 per ounce amid economic uncertainty. Following the global financial crisis, recent years have seen silver prices fluctuate, influenced by factors such as monetary policy, industrial demand, and market sentiment. Despite these fluctuations, silver has maintained its status as a valuable and sought-after asset. Its recent performance, breaking above the $30 mark and consolidating around $32.50, suggests a strong foundation for future gains. Technical analysis supports the potential for further price increases. Silver's breakout above its multi-year resistance levels indicates bullish momentum. Key technical indicators, such as the Relative Strength Index, RSI, and Exponential Moving Averages, EMA, point towards continued upward movement. The RSI remains comfortably in the bullish range, and the upward sloping 20 period EMA suggests that the bullish trend is intact. Looking ahead, several factors are poised to drive silver prices higher. The combination of increased industrial demand, particularly from the renewable energy sector, and ongoing economic uncertainties create a favorable environment for silver. 
Additionally, central banks' monetary policies and potential inflationary pressures further support the case for higher silver prices. Future projections indicate that silver could reach and potentially surpass the $2,000 mark. This target is not purely speculative, but is based on a measured move target derived from the range break of silver's multi-year consolidation. Adding the height of the 3.5-year range to its high point of $30 provides a calculated target around $42.60. Given the current market dynamics and economic conditions, reaching $2,000 per ounce becomes a plausible scenario in the longer term. Moreover, the macroeconomic environment continues to evolve, with persistent inflation and geopolitical tensions contributing to market volatility. These conditions often lead investors to seek safe haven assets like silver, further driving its demand and price. As Peter Schiff predicts, silver's potential to hit $2,000 is grounded in these robust economic and market fundamentals. The historical context, combined with technical analysis and future projections, paints a compelling picture for silver's significant price appreciation. Stay with us as we delve into the final and most crucial aspect of this discussion, how these combined factors could lead to the unprecedented surge in silver prices and why now might be the perfect time to invest. Make sure to subscribe for the latest insights and updates and let us know in the comments, do you think silver will hit $2,000? What factors do you believe will drive its price higher? Share your thoughts below. Dollar's role as the dominant currency in the world, as the reserves reserve currency of the world. And that means it's the end of America's days of living beyond uh, her means. Um, you know, Americans have enjoyed that exorbitant privilege. It's enabled us as a people to run trillion dollar a year trade deficits, which means we get to consume a trillion dollars a year worth of stuff that we didn't produce and we didn't really pay for. And so our lives are a lot better because we have all that stuff that we got for nothing. But when we can no longer just export the dollars we create out of thin air to import the products that other countries manufacture, uh, expending significant resources in the process, land, labor, capital, uh, when we can no longer do that, uh, then Americans are going to have to get used to a much lower standard of living. Um, I mean, that's just the reality. I mean, just, you know, imagine going into a Walmart and all the stuff isn't there. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, you have Americans will have a lot of cash, but very little to buy. And what is available is going to be much more expensive. So uh, we're going to have to get used to not buying things. And of course, a lot of the U.S. economy is built around selling stuff <laughs> to Americans. And if Americans can't afford to buy, then that whole you know in industry, all that retail and service sector, uh, just collapses, and uh, it's going to be a, a a rough road to transition back to a productive economy that is viable and sustainable on its own that can exist without the privilege of the reserve currency of the dollar. Now, maybe we'll have some help from AI. Maybe that will make uh, a return to uh, real production, uh, you know, easier in the U.S., you know, because, you know, we'll have robots maybe and stuff like that. But, to fully uh, appreciate why silver know, it's going to take a long time to train all these It's important uh, to examine you know, its historical performance and future projections. Understanding the past can provide valuable insights into the potential trajectory of silver prices and validate Peter Schiff's bull prediction. Historically, silver has experienced several significant price movements driven by various economic and geopolitical factors. One of the most notable periods was during the late 1970s and early 1980s, when silver prices surged due to high inflation and geopolitical tensions. Another spike occurred in 2011 when silver prices reached nearly $50 per ounce amid economic uncertainty following the global financial crisis. Recent years have seen silver prices fluctuate, influenced by factors such as monetary policy, industrial demand, and market sentiment. Despite these fluctuations, silver has maintained its status as a valuable and sought-after asset. Its recent performance, breaking above the $30 mark and consolidating around $32.50, suggests a strong foundation for future gains. Technical analysis supports the potential for further price increases. Silver's breakout above its multi-year resistance levels indicates bullish momentum. Key technical indicators, such as the Relative Strength Index, RSI, and Exponential Moving Averages, EMA, point towards continued upward movement. 
The RSI remains comfortably in the bullish range, and the upward sloping 20 period EMA suggests that the bullish trend is intact. Looking ahead, several factors are poised to drive silver prices higher. The combination of increased industrial demand, particularly from the renewable energy sector, and ongoing economic uncertainties create a favorable environment for silver. Additionally, central banks' monetary policies and potential inflationary pressures further support the case for higher silver prices. Future projections indicate that silver could reach and potentially surpass the $2,000 mark. This target is not purely speculative, but is based on a measured move target derived from the range break of silver's multi-year consolidation. Adding the height of the 3.5-year range to its high point of $30 provides a calculated target around $42.60. Given the current market dynamics and economic conditions, reaching $2,000 per ounce becomes a plausible scenario in the longer term. Moreover, the macroeconomic environment continues to evolve, with persistent inflation and geopolitical tensions contributing to market volatility. These conditions often lead investors to seek safe haven assets like silver further driving its demand and price. As Peter Schiff predicts, silver's potential to hit $2,000 is grounded in these robust economic and market fundamentals. The historical context, combined with technical analysis and future projections, paints a compelling picture for silver's significant price appreciation. Stay with us as we delve into the final and most crucial aspect of this discussion, how these combined factors could lead to the unprecedented surge in silver prices, and why now might be the perfect time to invest. Make sure to subscribe for the latest insights and updates, and let us know in the comments. Do you think silver will hit $2,000? What factors do you believe will drive its price higher? Share your thoughts below. Gold really flies in the face of the uh, narrative of a soft landing, of a return to 2% inflation, of uh, rate cuts coming. And so they don't really want to acknowledge that or, or question these beliefs. You know, or you know, acknowledge uh, the warning that that gold is sounding on inflation, on fiscal policy, on monetary policy. But also, I think a lot of the financial media has been captured by uh, the, the cryptos and the Bitcoin people uh, who are spending a lot of money advertising on all the financial networks and who flood the financial networks with their guests. And so, I think they've really pushed gold to the back burner. Because as far as they're concerned, gold's irrelevant because now we have something better. We have Bitcoin, which they claim is digital gold. Uh, but it's not digital gold at all. I mean, uh, it's no more digital gold uh, than, than digital food is food. Uh, you know, gold has real properties uh, in the real world that are vitally important to its value. You can't just replicate that, you know, digitally because you can't substitute Bitcoin for gold in any capacity in which gold is used. Uh, so it's not an alternative. Uh, so what what is it? It's, it's, it's a token, but there's nothing unique about it. There's 20,000 other digital tokens that have been created. Sure, they have a different name, although some of the names are very similar uh, to Bitcoin. Uh, the properties are very similar. I mean, there's tweaks here and there, but some are pretty much carbon copies of Bitcoin. Uh, many have improved on some of the flaws of Bitcoin, uh, but regardless, uh, you know, there's 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 enough of them for everybody to buy them. I mean, they can keep creating new ones out of thin air, and and so th there's no reason for Bitcoin uh, to be worth, uh, you know, sixty plus thousand dollars or anywhere close to that, or even ten thousand or five thousand or one thousand. Uh, I think it's all just a digital a Ponzi, a pyramid. I mean, it's it's a blockchain letter is what it, what it is. It's just a, a chain letter on a blockchain. Uh, and, and that's all that's new is that a, a classic uh, fraud is, is being perpetrated using the internet and blockchain. So all they've done is dressed it up for the 21st century and repackaged it and presented it as if it was, you know, something new and legitimate but it's just the latest iteration of fool's gold. Well, let's talk about the dollar here because you also mentioned you think- How ridiculous it is that so much depends on a few words spoken by, by Powell or you know a couple of changes to a statement or a dot plot and all of this determines you know whether we buy or sell. I mean, the Fed should just be irrelevant in, in the background. 
I remember once upon a time, nobody even knew who the Fed chairman was. I mean, a lot of people didn't even know what the Fed was. And and now, you know, there may be more people who know the chairman of the Fed than know who the vice president is. And, uh, you know, it's not supposed to be that way. Uh, but it's become a very political um, office. And everybody looks to the Fed to solve problems. You know, in fact, you had all these politicians. They they think the Fed is there to solve the inequality or, you know, they don't like the distribution of wealth. Uh, it's too highly concentrated or there's too much unemployment in the African-American community. And they asked the Fed, what are you going to do about it? There are people asking the Fed what they're going to do about climate change. Like, well, what do they have? They have